where nobody would even think about cheating you or screwing you over because they didn't want their name being ruined and because they were honorable people. Now, there's always been a lot of bad people in Texas as well. There are a lot of great people across this fine land. But I got to tell you, the good old-fashioned real Texas values that I grew up with, that's Americana, and that's what I want to see come back to this country. I guess you could call it chivalry. Kind of the end of the American Revolution kind of settled here in Texas. And for all our bad angels, we had a lot more good ones, to use that analogy. Closing out here, the worldwide transmission with John Rappaport. John, quantify who the globalists are, what their deepest end game is, from all the thousands of people you've interviewed on your TV show and radio show and books you've written and the bestsellers and all the rest of it, really delving into the esoteric nature of these people. And then how do we beat them? John Rappaport. Well, they're certainly the kind of banksters that you've been talking about for a long time, and I think increasingly so, because the money men who are manipulating money, creating the money, uh, inflating, deflating, you know, value is what they're doing at the drop of a hat, financing ventures, pulling their money out, putting it in. You know, roaming the world, because under the World Trade Organization, which is a key element of globalism today, corporate banksters and so on can move in and move out at will. And they're just, you know, they're, they want to own the world. They want to own life itself. And uh, we don't have a lot of time, but we can certainly, uh, you know, indicate that the they want to play God. That's why they, any, any free will gets in the way of them. They're here to override humanity, turn us into robots. Exactly. Destroys all of that idea of freedom. And so that's, the, you know, the solution has always been and continues to be freedom. The individual, starting with the individual. And the problem has been recently that there's a lot of people who pay lip service to that idea of freedom, but they don't back it up. I agree, but what about the, the globalists? How do they not burn with a wish for liberty? How do they not want to empower others? How do they want to see others fall and be weak? And then, as you just said, how do the average yuppies and people just pay lip service and not take it personal that people are trying to enslave them? Well, I think to explain the globalists, you've got to understand that those people, their rise to extreme wealth was not ever through the free market. They cheated, lied, stole, uh, corrupted, murdered people to get... John to D. Top. Rockefeller said competition's a sin. Exactly. So by the time they got to the top, you think they're going to turn around and talk about freedom? No. That's the horror to them. That's just, that's like Satan to them, is freedom. Because... They did everything they could to destroy freedom on their way up. That's how they got to the top. So that really explains their psychology. And they lost a lot of battles and are battle scarred, and they want to settle the score. Exactly. They look at themselves as in a perpetual war with the human race, and freedom is their nemesis. That's, you know, that's the silver cross that, you know, destroys them. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to think about it. They just want to eliminate it and make everybody into robots and androids. That's their whole plan. They think that's going to make them safe. Of course, it's not, because you can never kill freedom. But there's got to be, we're talking about the yuppies now who play lip service to this whole idea of freedom. They're just cowards. You know, they sell out at the drop of a hat. But there's millions and millions and millions of people in America that do have some notion of what freedom means. And they have to deepen that notion to the point where they know what it is that they are going to do in order to preserve and protect it. I agree, but plus the yuppies don't get, and I never knew this when I started out and was ignorant. I just knew I loved freedom and didn't want to be a slave. I'm still ignorant, but compared to what I was 18, 20 years ago, it's, it's a different creature. But you, you become physically more successful by not selling out in this paradigm, especially towards the end when everybody else already sold out. They're selling out cheap. You're selling out to be a slave. That's no deal at all. And you fail. I mean, a long time ago as a writer, I came face to face with this question. Well, I could sell out and then I could write stuff that I thought would make me a lot of money. And then I thought to myself, yeah, but suppose I even try that, which I don't want to do, and I fail. 
that's going to be a double failure. So why not do exactly what I want to do, come hell or high water, and let's go that way. And just as you say, I've watched people over the years who have sold out, fall by the wayside, who thought, man, I've got this thing knocked. And these are people that I've known, and they say to me, man, you're just going, you're heading for total disaster because you're doing exactly what you want to do. And my response has always been, well, yeah, well, let's see what happens 10 years from now. Let's see who's still around. And I've watched some of these people just absolutely burn up and blow away in the wind because they sold out. They became totally bankrupt spiritually, morally, and even physically bankrupt because it just never worked out. What really works out in the long run is you know what you actually believe in, you know what freedom is, and you act on it, and you don't stop. Well, exactly. In fact, I've seen the psychological studies uh, over and over again, but I knew this instinctively, why so many criminals in, in criminology try to sabotage themselves, and why people that do really evil stuff are so unhappy and have such horrible lives. It's because even their subconscious brain isn't pure evil and wants to destroy them. It, it's like their own self doesn't like them. Uh, it's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. And, and I think you're right when it comes to the globalists. Deep down, you know, they know that this is totally destructive, totally criminal, that they're responsible, and they're looking for some form of end to themselves, self-destruction, suicide. I mean, that is necessary to explain some of the things that they're doing, because it can't be explained in any other way. That subconsciously, they're looking to destroy themselves. But unfortunately, if they succeed, they're going to take a lot of people along with them. That's why they got to be stopped. I'm looking for a way for space colonization and my my grandchildren to basically achieve immortality. I'm looking just to absolutely double down and invest in the future of humanity and to have goodwill towards all and to just crush parasites and criminals and scum and, and just stop being slobs and rediscover our primitive energy and to merge that with all the new developments that the best and brightest have brought us and to just, just build a wonderful world, John. And I guess they call that terrorist yeah i guess they do what it really is is freedom and that's what you know i got hooked on when i was 10 or 11 years old was some of the great science fiction that talked about vast far-flung you know outposts of humanity on planets and so on and so forth and what you would see in these different places is people who were free they were they were cut loose from the centralized insanity and bureaucracy and control, and they just built and created extraordinary lives from themselves. Sure, and Frank Herbert and Robert Heinlein and all of them said these were allegories of what was happening on Earth when they were alive. Absolutely. Yeah, Heinlein especially was really critical of everything he was seeing develop, and a lot of his readers never really realized that, but he, he saw it coming. Man, I read stuff of his when I was 12 or 13 that was and by the way, I hitchhiked through Amarillo in 1961 oh. on Route 66 out of East St. Louis, and I got to Amarillo in the dawn. A <laughs> guy dropped me off, and I saw a huge pasture with these uh, cows standing in tall grass, so tall that you couldn't see their legs, and they looked like they were floating. And I thought, wow, what kind of world is this? Fantastic. Wide open, beautiful Amarillo in the morning. We ought to call this segment, and we put it up on YouTube, Amarillo by Morning Now. Wow. Yeah. What a powerful pro human discussion. No more fake news.com. I tell you, it's a pleasure knowing you, John Rappaport. And I want to get you to Austin. We ought to fly you here soon to sit down to an interview for another upcoming film. Thank you so much, John and crew. Great job. Listeners, we love you. We'll see you tomorrow. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals.